Good morning, everyone. It's Friday, and welcome to Inspiration for Today. Let me remind you, Sunday, we have our worship service for Saddleback Laguna Woods at 5 p.m. on Sunday afternoon, TV6. And it's going to be a good one. It really is. So, And I love it because it's the time that we get to see our own Laguna Woods worship team of, of David and Noel Green singing to us, too, and, or singing along with. Well, this being Friday, it's the end of a week that, uh, you know, in a way I did for myself. I'll be honest with you, to share with you. I needed this. I wanted this. I wanted to think long and hard about the end of my life when, and I, am I ready? Is everything here on earth ready for the next life? And if I were to know that I was lingering and I had just a few minutes to live, would I live those with just joy about what's coming, which is going to be with Jesus? Or would I have regret of, Lord, why didn't I do such and such a thing? Why didn't I say this to that person or, or anything like that? So I really needed this, and especially today. The thing that we're talking about today, I'm saying it publicly to you so that you can hold me accountable back. I want to do, I, I need to do this. I think you should too, but that's between you and the Lord. Here's our verse for today, and it comes actually from the book of Daniel. Knowing that God is sovereign over everything and that out of love he has the best in store for me and for you, that has given me such comfort in life. I always told my kids from the time they were very, very young, and if you haven't told your kids this, I encourage you to do so. I always say, you are in the exact right family. You don't have perfect parents, but you do have the parents that God sovereignly, out of love, he put you in this family. And so I rejoice for you. I rejoice for me because you're the exact right child for me. I wouldn't trade Stacy or Holly or now their grandkids for anything in the world. And I know God put them and me in their life and they in ours. Believe it or not, there's only one place in the Bible that speaks of God's sovereignty directly. And that's in the book of Daniel, chapter 4. At verse 25, Daniel saying uh, to the king, he says, the Lord Most High is sovereign over the kingdoms of men and gives them to anyone he wishes. He's not only sovereign over the kingdoms of men, he's sovereign over our lives, and he does exactly what's right for you and for me. And, uh, and then we get that blessing. Well, I wanted, I wanted to make that point because the people that are in your life are there because God wanted them to be. He wanted you to have those children or those friends, that husband, even if you, well, maybe he's not in your life anymore, but nothing happens by chance. God sovereignly either allows it to happen or, or actively puts those people in your life. Now, I married into Diane's family. And her family was so dramatically different from mine. I was an only child, and some of my uncles had no children and so on. So our family gatherings were very small and quiet, I might add. Uh, I went to Diane's family, and they had a Roman Catholic background, and they truly uh, did. <laughs> they had lots of children, let's say that. So the family gatherings there were actually the opposite. And I bring this point up because there were so many people there. When it was time to leave, I used to, I used to like, I couldn't believe it. It took literally at least a half an hour. I'm thinking in my mind, I look back, I think it took an hour for everyone to say goodbye to everyone, and by the time they got to the end, I think they forgot that they had already said goodbye to that person. <laughs> so, so it was kind of an ongoing thing. Uh, I would say goodbye to everyone and then go wait in the car sometimes. But anyway, that's another story. Now, why does that, why do I bring that up? 
because it's important for people to say goodbye. And if I were to be called home this afternoon, let's say, I haven't said goodbye to any of my family or friends if it was sudden. <clears throat> and I would hate that. That is one of those things that I would probably regret more than anything else. You know, I haven't been able to see in person uh, m my daughter Holly and her family and the, the two grandkids, my beloved and truly son-in-law Rob, who I, I love so dearly too. And we haven't been in person uh, for a long time. So <laughs> they would be come to mind first, but in that sense, because I haven't seen them. I get to see Stacy and my and Ben, and that's wonderful. But even them, I certainly haven't said goodbye to in that sense. So here's what I'm suggesting, and here's what the Lord has laid on my heart, and here's what I'm going to do. I pray you would consider doing the same. I'm going to make, make a list of the loved ones. There's eight close people in our family. So I'd start there. And I'm going to say goodbye to them in either letter or video form. Either one. And, you, and I mention both because I probably will use video because it's so easy to do. But you might prefer to write. And you might have your thoughts come together better if you write them. And, but either way, put them in a place so that the loved ones know that if the Lord calls you quickly home, here is your direct goodbye to them. Here's the things that the Lord has laid on my heart that we need to do. One, address it directly to them, and each one is individual. And I'm putting five things in each of my goodbyes. Uh, Number one, what I loved about them. What I loved about them. Number two, how they reflected God to me. How I saw God in them. How they were wonderful, godly people. And even if, if somebody that you're writing to is not a follower of Christ yet, this might be the thing that brings them to it. But they do reflect and have godly qualities. I know they do. Everyone does. Everyone does. Number three, I want to be sure I thank them for the blessing that they are in my life. Thank them for the blessing that they have been in my life. And number four, I want to encourage them to stay close to the Lord Jesus all their life and finish strong eventually when their time comes, that they will have walked and had a great life with the Lord. And then finally, the fifth thing I want to put in is this, you know, any life lesson that comes to me as I'm doing this that I would want to share with them. Why should they have to relearn something that I struggled with in life uh, if I can share it with them and maybe they can appropriate it to their own life right then. So, you know, what I loved about them, how they reflected God to me, thanking them for the blessing they were to me, encouraging them to stay close to Jesus and any life lesson that I might want to tell them. Can you imagine the power that that will have in your loved one's life? The, the reassurance from to them that you love them right to the end. And of course, you'll express that. The, there is no particular length on these. They could be any length. But the fact is, they will bless them like nothing else and encourage them like nothing else that you could do. We're taking 10 days uh, off to travel in a very remote part of Northern California in about two weeks. And so this is my goal for those 10 days to get this done. So when I, after those shows, you can ask me, did you get it done, Ray? And then I'm going to ask you, though, did you get it done? Hey, God bless. Thank you for this week. Thank you for sharing my walk, my journey in the, on these issues with me. I love that you did that. God bless. Have a great weekend. See you next week.